Empires of the Undergrowth version 0.31 is here, with some big changes. Let's start with something pretty. Out with the old, and in with the new. The beach levels have been given a fresh lick of paint, with a brand new sandy environment for them to take place in. This goes for both the story levels, and the free play maps too. New decorations such as flowering bindweed, limpets, and scallop shells will make the place feel more beachy than ever. You'll also notice a few creature changes here and there. There's a new species of tiger beetle and wolf spider to firmly establish the campaign's beach levels as being set in coastal Europe. Don't worry though, you'll still see the older species in free play. The Formica Fusca Queen has a new model as well. Free play is now part of the custom game menu, which also has the new skirmish setup. Skirmish is a streamlined mode, allowing players to quickly jump into a game with AI-controlled colonies in a free play map. A skirmish game will have preset food sources and landmarks, and in some respects will operate like a campaign level. So Leafcutter's leaves won't regenerate, landmarks won't change over time, and such like. Its emphasis is on colony versus colony combat, rather than the environmental challenges that a full free play game offers. The AI colonies in a custom game are now much smarter than they were, and are able to respond to the changing battlefield in a more dynamic way. They'll now help out allies in need, and more intelligently assess whether they should attack or defend. They can tailor their nest designs for their species, adapt their build plans to the needs of the battlefield, guard resources, steel aphids, and more. They'll also make the decision on whether to harass their enemy, or finally crush them if they think they can manage it. The way an AI colony behaves has been broken down into three components. Temperament, Reaction, and Cheats. Temperament controls how eager it is for fighting and building. Reaction deals with how fast it thinks and implements its plans. And Cheats are self-explanatory. By default, AI colonies get a head start on resources and building, but that can be disabled. The new modular AI system is very adaptable and expandable, and it will continue to be an area of developmental tweaking for the remainder of the project. There are some new landmarks that will appear in custom games. Relocatable aphid plants like those that appear in the 4x levels, carnivorous plants that create tempting traps you'll need to be aware of, bay plants with tasty caterpillars for meat eaters, and the huge creature landmarks that can spawn one of the truly titanic creatures from the campaign. Those are currently the huge rit spider, the great blue skimmer, and the American bullfrog. Scary stuff. There are four new uber creatures, just for that extra special sense of dread when their arrival is announced. Uber narrowmouth toads, bombardier beetles, eastern newts, and red velvet ants will be terrorizing your custom games before you know it. Seriously, beware of that Uber Bombardier spray. It's deadly. In this update, many more creatures can be climbed and mounted by your ants, not just the very largest ones. As a general rule, most creatures as big or bigger than a large tiger beetle can be climbed, ants mounted on enemies deal bonus damage, and apply a damage buff to allies attacking from the ground. Be careful though, if a creature despawns with ants still on it, those ants will be lost. Most of the levels in the campaign have had some changes, some of them more obvious than others, but in general, in the 1x and 2x levels, there will be more food from the environment and less from aggressive creatures. The aphids in 2-2 Queen of the Hill will continue to produce food throughout the night, making them a much more valuable asset. There's some new narrator dialogue in 2-1 Rising Tide, signalling the arrival of a large food item that must be contested. In the 4x levels, creatures will give slightly more food. Because of their different eating habits, the 3x leafcutter levels are largely unaffected by this rebalance, but we have given a substantial health buff to the huge whip spider. Hooray for Big Whippy! The menu system has been updated in several places. Here's the new level launcher, for example. The old realistic mode setting has been broken down into its components under the new Advanced Options tab, and we realise not everyone likes the Christmas hats, so those can now be disabled. The user interface now has a scale setting. This is an important feature for accessibility, but will also be handy for people who like to play on TVs, or on handheld systems such as the Steam Deck. And those are the major changes for version 0.31. Thanks for watching, 
there'll be a newsletter arriving very soon with details about what's happening in the immediate future. Enjoy! Enjoy!